In order to have days like this, you're going to have days like this. This is Tips on Tuesday. We're going to talk about what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Stay tuned so you don't feel like doing this. If you like these videos, please subscribe and give us a like. And if you have anything to add to the conversation or any questions, please leave them below. Z and I are halfway through our first circumnavigation, and we are still learning. I hope this video will give you some basic information, a few tips, and encourage you to do more research before you drop the hook. go take a look at the anchor here. So let's talk a little bit about hardware or ground tackle as sailors call it. And the first thing we'll talk about is the anchor. There are so many different types of anchors and each manufacturer will explain in very glossy detail why their anchor is the best. I don't actually know which is the best but probably different for each situation i.e. mud, sand, grass, etc. But what I do know is our 32 kilogram bugle type anchor has worked well for Aquarius everywhere we have anchored. Yes, there's been a few places where I didn't grab right away, but we never had to leave an anchorage. I've found sailors that swear by certain types or brands of anchor, but Z and I have had good luck in our 20,000 K miles and Jimp completed a circumnavigation on Aquarius with the anchor we have aboard now. And neither Jimp nor I have dragged significantly on this anchor. Do your research. And choose your anchor carefully because your anchor is always at the end of your lifeline. No matter how good your anchor is, it's only as good as how you set it. Just watch this. Now this is a bad anchor job. Let me show you. This is this boat right here. Look, anchor looks like it's just on its side. It's not even in at all. If they got any kind of wind, they'd probably pull. Anyways, let's go look at some more. Anchors. Now let's listen to what Captain Blackie has to say about anchors. <laughs> So why do you have five anchors? Well, um, well, this is a storm anchor. Everybody needs a storm anchor. You know, big 65 pounder here. Um, uh, one time I, I had to leave an anchorage. I and I had to leave. I lost one of the anchors. I had to leave two anchors behind. If I could, I might have lost the second one. Uh, so I don't know. You never have too many anchors. I don't think you know. Yeah, we have three aboard. Yeah, uh, and people just give me ones, and so I. Uh, I have a nice stainless steel damper back there. I'm not excited about dampers, but maybe if I have to use it, I'll use it. And yeah, this this fisherman anchor here, this is a got the uh, um, uh, kind of of, of uh, flukes that don't uh, jam the line, don't grab the line uh, in the back of it. And uh, uh, Hirsch, it's a Hirsch off uh, kind of design, basically. But it's a three-part anchor. And I, I made a few of those and gave them to friends, and I just end up with one of my, of my own. Actually, I think the uh, fisherman anchor is the best all-around anchor. Uh, you'll foul it if you uh, turn on it, and so it's, you need a second anchor or certain anchor sometimes, but uh, it uh, grabs just about everything, and it's especially good for coral, so I, I really like that kind of an anchor. It's just actually, I've never had a windlass. I've only had one winch until just uh, last year, uh, but I got this electric windlass now, and I'm, it's a Lumar, and it, 
See, I think it's going to work just fine. I haven't actually had a chance to use it. I've just been throwing the line over. But this, uh, this anchor, that's a 48-pound uh, CQR-like anchor that I designed and built. And it's, uh, I, I made a few of them for myself and my friends, and uh, I, I like it a lot. It's kind of extra pointed, a little more lead at the point, a little bit of curve to the point, but uh, it works good. And after watching the entirety of this video, maybe go back and watch the love tour, Making Love, because there's a lot of great tips that Blackie has in that video. We have three anchors aboard Aquarius. Our secondary is a 28 kilogram version of our first anchor, which is a bugle type. And our third anchor is a Dan Firth in storage. Some anchorages are so tight, all the boats are anchored front and back. This was the case at our first stop in the Marquesas, but since there were so many boats inside the harbor, we anchored outside with a few other unlucky souls. But I will say one thing, there was much less mosquito action outside the harbor than inside the harbor. The chain. How much chain do you really need? That's a great question, asked by many newbie sailors, and in my opinion, and only my opinion, the answer is 75 meters. I know many sailors that will say 100 meters is the minimum, but we have never put out more than 65 meters and we are halfway around the world. Maintain your chain. Turn your chain around end to end every year or so and inspect your chain every six months or so. This two-hour job could save your life. There are some studies that say you should not have stainless steel chain because of the pinhole corrosion. And this is why we check our chain often. Windless. Make sure you have a strong enough motor and the chain fits it properly. They are nice to have when sailing short-handed. Aquarius also has a counter so I can see in the cockpit the length of chain I have out. When I am over the spot I'd like to leave my anchor, I try to set the anchor on the ocean floor, then start to drift back slowly while letting the chain out slowly. Once I've reached about 5 meters of chain on the ocean floor, I will put Aquarius in reverse and lay the desired amount of chain on the ocean floor. This job is so much easier with a chain counter. Remember, don't start to back up too fast until you have your anchor sitting on the ocean floor. If you do, you do not know where your anchor will end up. Also try to make sure that the nut on the windlass is not too tight. If your windlass is sticking, you should clean and grease the friction contacts. And you should also make sure your windlass is covered unless you're using it. But, uh... Most of them have buttons on the windlass and those buttons go bad very quickly in the sun. So cover your windlass. So this, this cover is either on here or at the captain's desk. And uh, I'm just going to leave it here because we're gonna put it back on before we sail. We usually back up on our chain to make sure that it will hold whatever conditions we expect to see while at this anchorage. This is just putting Aquarius in reverse and making sure our anchor is not dragging. The snubber. There are many different kinds, but here's the one we use, and we pretty much like it. This one was inherited from Jimp, the previous owner. The snubber provides shock reduction and takes the pressure off the windlass. Usually, the longer and stretchier the lines to your chain, the better. Right now, our lines are a bit short, and we will lengthen them when we get to Thailand, probably three or four meters next time.
The swivel. This helps keep the twists out of the anchor chain. This helps the anchor stay flat on the sea bottom. The good swivels are expensive, and in my opinion, they are very helpful. But there is much debate on the swivels, so I'll leave it up to you to do the research. But the swivel also helps when bringing the anchor aboard. Ooh, that's nice. Next up is the anchor watch. This is a must-have item. There are many apps available for phones and pads, and I think everyone on board should have a phone with an anchor watch and everyone should set the anchor watch while at anchor. They even have an anchor watch app that will call you if your boat starts moving. This app would be perfect if you're worried about dragging when you're off the boat or worried about some pirate taking it for a joyride. In Indo, Malaysia, Thailand, and most other countries, for $10 you can buy a prepaid SIM card, and also cheap to have an extra smartphone around with the app. This way, your extra phone will call you if your boat moves. What a nice piece of kit. Mm. And next week, we're going to talk about my balls. These are a cool anchoring job. Anchor weights. Rules of thumb that I use when dropping the hook and some more, hopefully, useful information. If you like this video, give us a like down below and click here to subscribe. That really helps us. And if you want to watch more of us, click one of those.